Oculus is still a really good and interesting movie and just sort of story, honestly. This like haunted mirrors and whatnot. So we have Karen Gillian from the MCU, Nebula, and then her brother from Titans, DC Universe Titans, Dick Grayson, aka Robin, aka Nightwing, teaming up to be brothers and sisters. I sort of like this past and present sort of timeline thing going on where we jump right into the past of their childhood and then present day. Dick Grayson starts off, I'm gonna call him Dick Grayson, but Nightwing, you know, he's in a mental institution. He needs like mental help. His sister comes and helps him. His sister is living like a normal life. She like has a boyfriend and you know, we literally learn that she's very smart, you know? She's not oblivious to weird things or supernatural bit things going on. By the way, the parents playing, the people, the actors playing their parents are one, Katie Sackhoff. Really cool to see her in, in anything. She's a black amulet on the flash, you know, cause she likes the metal. Uh, if anyone gets that reference, daddy likes the metal. And then the father played by, I don't know, whoever don't know him. I like both of them. They both play the roles really excellently. So both the siblings, they go back into the old house. The sister wants to be back there because she claims that something unnatural happened, something supernatural happened to both their parents and both of them, both of their old kids. However, Dick Grayson, AKA Nightwing is like, sister, you're crazy. I just got out of mental help. You're insane. You know, he, 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 he like is very logical about this. Very skeptical that, you know, his father was cheating on their mother and the mother just went crazy. That's how he rationalizes it. Because in the past, she starts seeing a woman in his office. His father starts biting his like, his like index finger. Their mother starts questioning them. She starts going insane. And then, you know, maybe it's just like a breaking point. That's how he rationalizes it. He's thinking about it. And then Karen Gillian is like, no, do you not remember that one time where our dog was in the our father's office where the one ass creepy ass mirror was and the dog disappeared you know like you don't remember that and so they do the experiment in the present day put the dog in a cage put them in front of the mirror closing it and then while they're talking arguing turns out the dog is missing and things are placed where they're not supposed to be and then she hits a shoe has like three different cameras to record and turns out those cameras were placed there by them however and it seems to be in a different time or different timeline and so that's what's really interesting about this movie this mirror or whatever this supernatural thing or being is messing not only with time but people's memories and placement and just everything basically and that's really i found it to be just amazing again good things little things like that i just find it to be somewhat interesting so again Cutting back past and present day, a dog disappears. Turns out any calls, but other way they, they can fuck with like freak like calls and frequencies and shit too. So anytime they like start calling things, they don't know if it's real life or the supernatural thing. So they, they have to just be claustrophobic. There's like there's a claustrophobic feeling. You know, it's in this kind of relatively big house. They're stuck in this you know, little house, their childhood home. And so yeah, we go back in the past where their mother Kitty Sacco is looking at a mirror and there's like a mirror version of herself smiling creepily. That obviously takes control over her whole body. And she starts chasing her wanting to kill her kids. Just like the conjuring or more like a Amityville where something's inside of her. She just wants to kill her kids. So it's a really creepy like sort of scene where the mother is chasing them to close the door. Their father comes in at the right or even wrong time. Chokes her out but I think kills her because he's like telling kids to you know go back in your room. Go back in your room please. Calls the police turns out again you can't call because these things are controlling you. The frequencies and everything just controlling messing with their time memory and place just everything so yeah this thing calls for her she like puts her wife his wife in another room and then the father being possessed immediately telling him to be like you know mother is sick and she needs to be put down again all these lies cut back to present day we have karen gillian eating assumingly an apple but turns out it's glass so she's like coughing out blood and then she's also seeing weird things she thinks she stabs this monster thing turns out to be her boyfriend so again really cool interesting stuff her boyfriend dies she's like oh no boyfriend that i don't care about because he was barely in the movie he was there to die basically and then we cut back and then there's like this like cutting back in past and present where both of the parents are chasing them both in their adult and kid form or like older and younger selves i thought that was really cool too cool compare and contrast thing and then we sadly get to the final like act sadly nebula and karen gillian oh sorry same person karen gillian sadly dies this thing eventually gets to her man it sucks you know and so the police the real police comes and you know think that nightwing has killed his own sister but in reality they've been in this whole like mind game of this whole mirror like supernatural thing thinking that you know the sister think thinking that she can beat it both of them can beat it but sadly they, they couldn't and she dies for it and so he goes to jail or like a mental institution again with everyone thinking that he's mental and crazy and then there's a shot where we see her older selves and both their parents their eyes glowing and looking at him 
So it seems that the, this thing and this mirror is taking people's souls or their conscience and collecting them in this one house or whatever house they're in, wherever this mirror's at. They're collecting those souls and conscience, which is again another interesting thing about this whole thing. Super tragic end, right? He goes away thinking everyone he's crazy and with the sister dying. Super tragic and dark end to a really good movie. Next, hopefully this movie can top Oculus, but the 18th will be Little Monsters. I have seen this randomly on Hulu too. I was like, oh, this looks like fun. The one girl from Us is in this so yeah hopefully it's as fun as i thought as i first watched it 